to the home garden. This video will help you get started. First, a quick rundown of the zones. The sunniest bits. These are the areas that get sunlight for most of the day. This is where the high calorie, starchy staple crops, cassava, yams, and sweet potato are grown. The orchard. This is the second sunniest area, full of fruits, nuts, perennial vegetables, and nitrogen fixing trees. The shady section. Covered by an oak tree overstory, cold sensitive plants like banana and jackfruit and Malabar chestnut live here. The lead zone. It's an old house. Lead paint seemed like such a great idea at the time. So the area right next to the house has fruit and nut and nitrogen fixing trees, but no leaf or tuber crops because lead. The border. The edge of the property is planted with nutrient accumulating biomass plants that catch and hold nutrients before they have a chance to run off the property. Okay, next we will look at how it all works. The orchard. Fruit trees here are planted close together. You could say ridiculously close together. What were you thinking? The idea is not to live off of fruit. The idea is to grow as many different types of fruit as possible in order to add variety to the diet as well as obtain year-round harvesting. Think condiments, sauces, and desserts, not fruitarianism. After fruiting, the trees are pruned back. Leaves are left on the ground as mulch. Wood is put in the shed. This pruning allows more light for the understory of secondary staple crops like malanga and maranta, perennial vegetables like chaya and katuk, and all the herbs and spices. Tree vegetables are cut back frequently to ensure a tender and tasty new growth for eating. Any woody bits are put in the shed to dry. Nitrogen-fixing trees grow over the orchard, providing dappled shade in the middle of summer. These trees are also pruned frequently, with any green or leafy bits left as mulch and any woody bits put in the shed. The lead zone. Trees here are kept pruned almost espalier style, becoming a second wall outside the house. Any limbs that threaten to shade the staple crop area are cut back. All pruned wood gets put in the shed, with the leaves left as mulch. The border. Vetiver and the leafy parts of Tithonia get cut and used as mulch under the food crops returning the captured minerals back into the garden. Any woody material is put in the shed. Shady bit. The bananas are mostly used as a cooked starch staple crop, with a small amount of them allowed to ripen into sweet fruit. The other assorted cold tender plants here provide fruits, nuts, leaves, and spices. Container gardener. You might be wondering what that space age growing area is in the other sunny spot. This is the container gardening area. Kitty pools with a small reservoir of water in the bottom give a higher moisture growing environment to a rotation of taro and tiger nuts. The pools also prevent the tigers from escaping. Sunniest bits. The majority of the sunlight on the property is dedicated to the crops that will be providing the bulk calories of the diet. There are multiple varieties of cassava and sweet potato and multiple species and varieties of yam, each in their own separate zone. Tubers are harvested from each plant as needed, rotating between species for diet diversity. Make sure you remove all propagated material when you harvest. This includes cassava stems, tiny sweet potato tubers, and yam bulbs. You don't want these crops accidentally coming back in these spots next year. Any woody material is put in the shed. Don't forget to save propagation material for replanting. After you harvest, plant a nitrogen-fixing legume in the empty spot with a different species of legume in each zone. Once you have gone through and harvested all your staple crops, you should have a nice bean crop coming in. Harvest your beans, then replant your staple crops in the zone where they have not been growing. Cassava gets planted where the yams were. Yams get planted where the sweet potatoes were. Sweet potatoes get planted where the cassava was. The soil should have a two-year break in between growing the same crop. Meals. All right, now you should have your starchy staple crop, your legumes, your leafy greens, your fruit, nuts, and seasoning. You are ready to feed yourself. But wait a minute, pretty much all these crops require cooking. Some of them require a lot of cooking. What were you thinking? Not to worry. 
head out to the shed and grab some wood that is completely dry. You have been putting wood in the shed, right? Good. Now, of course, we don't want to add any more carbon to the air, because why would you do that? So, we are going to be cooking with a biochar stove. Carbon negative cooking. Load up your biochar stove with your completely dry wood. Alright, now you can finish prepping your food. Now, cook yourself a delicious, guilt-free meal. When the flame on your stove gets low, empty it and quench your carbon. This keeps it from returning to the atmosphere for a while. Eat your delicious dinner. You totally deserve it. Then pee out any excess nutrients and catch them in the biochar. Biochar locks up the nitrogen and other essential nutrients so they can't escape. The more protein you eat, the more nitrogen your pee will contain. Once your biochar is fully soaked and charged with the good stuff, add it back into the garden where your food crops can utilize the nitrogen and minerals. And that's pretty much how the home garden works. Oh, one more thing. Jumpstarting the system. At the beginning, things can be kind of slow starting out, so you might want to jumpstart your system with imports until everything gets up and growing. To import minerals and nitrogen, you can buy food from other home gardens. Hopefully somebody nearby is raising dairy or poultry. Let these nutrients take a quick spin through your body before locking them up in biochar and feeding them to your garden. Carbon to mulch with and cook with can be imported initially via tree trimming companies. Dry your mulch completely in your shed before using it to cook with. Okay, that's really it. That's one way to operate a small, urban, humid, subtropical home garden. Prune, dry, mulch, harvest, cook, Fertilize, plant, rotate. Build soil, grow food. Got it? Now go out and start your own home garden, and be sure to make friends with other home gardens in your neighborhood. Preferably neighbors with completely different systems than you have, because diversity 